Hi there guys, so uh, welcome back to our Kickstarter uh, playthroughs. Uh, we're broadcast tonight from Sidekick Games, uh, Grange Life Gaming in Birmingham. Uh, and tonight we're going to be looking at Moonshiners of the Apocalypse, uh, which is a very silly game. Uh, it has some adult themes <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, violence, <laughs> drinking and so forth. So uh, technically this is uh, going to be as a uh, age rating uh, on it as a game, I suppose, uh, or at least in terms of the way we're playing it for tonight's broadcast. Um, so what we'd like to do then, obviously, is just make you aware there are some adult themes in terms of the way the game works and leave it up to you as to uh, uh, what you think if that's appropriate. Um, okay, so we're going to be obviously taking you through a full playthrough on this uh, for how the game works and everything else. Uh, but before we start off, just as a reminder, on some of the bits we've got coming up. Uh, start of November, uh, across the 2nd and 3rd of November, uh, we're gonna be running a 24 hour live stream Vampire Masquerade uh, tabletop session uh, for Bloodwise Charity. Uh, so if you're available to watch on that, that'd be amazing. Uh, and obviously if you feel so inclined and as you to be entertained, please donate to the charity. It's an amazing charity to, to work with. Yeah. Um, now what we've been doing with all these uh, Kickstarter game playthroughs uh, is that not only we're showing you how to play them, we're also, going to give them away. Uh, so in each case, every game that we demo goes into our prize pool. Um, and if we hit our target uh, for subscribers to the channel, that prize pool gets won uh, by randomly by one of our subscribers. So you get a whole load of lovely of, of lovely goodies uh, of all these different games that we've played through on. So as a reminder, I believe um, there's six already. There are indeed uh, six games. And obviously with tonight, there's going to be seven. Uh, so. Uh, we'll be starting with uh, Cthulhu Kids, uh, which is a, a great little uh, cosmic catastrophe card game. Yeah, so uh, sort of like uh, top drums with dice and Cthulhu. Uh, Forged Realms, which is a nice fast paced uh, card game where you're looking at uh, different quick rounds of play, nice tactics to it. Gruff, uh, where you're taking your mutant goats, because uh, the Gilly Goats Gruff, uh, and taking down the trolls and obviously the other herds of mutant goats. Maya Marsh where you're battling it out to become the new king of the goblins uh, through committing various acts of evil and proving yourself to be the nastiest goblin in the swamp. Uh, Somnium, Rise of Laputa. Uh, it's a nice, quick, fast-paced tactical card game where you're looking to build a court and uh, control uh, to become the new ruler. And Tiny Epic Mechs, uh, which is a lovely programming-based game uh, where you're planning moves ahead, battling it out to cover your meeple in body armour and uh, get the giant mech in the middle and go smash some things. My favourite so, so far. Yeah, whole range of really nice bits and pieces. So for tonight, what we're playing is said uh, Moonshiners of the Apocalypse. Uh, so the the apocalypse has come. The the, the place is trashed, um, and we are based now in Shantytown. Okay, uh, Shantytown is one of the surviving uh, areas in the apocalypse. Uh, each of us are playing Moonshiners. There's a whole selection of Moonshiner characters, uh, but for tonight, uh, I'll be playing as Samuel Connery. With a fine moustache. He has a, an amazing moustache. And I'll be uh, playing Marla Jones, or Johns. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, each one of them's got a little bit of a, uh, a backstory to it, which should give you a kind of, kind of feel to where this game's going. Uh, so, for uh, Samuel Connery, um, uh, his backstory is that, as it turned out, the world went tits up overnight, but I had my gun and my learnings. Uh, life as a Pinkerton agent taught me one thing. Every now and then, people will do stupid things. Uh, so you better be ready to sort things out. Yep, he is indeed a Pinkerton, armed with a peacemaker and a spear. Oh, good combination. Spear does look <coughs> like a Bowie knife attached to a um, <laughs> broom handle. <laughs> okay, uh, well, Marla, she was uh, raised to be a devoted housewife. But uh, unfortunately, uh, beloved Billy uh, saw fit to blacken her eyes far too many times. Uh, um, and basically, she... Wanted to point that out to him by, well, basically pointing a knife in several uh, locations at several times. And then he stopped yelling. Uh, although she doesn't seem to have a knife on her at the moment, it seems to be some kind of Winchester, I believe. So she's pretty well set up for a, an apocalyptic game. Yeah. No, obviously there's a range of different characters. These are just the two that could have kind of appealed uh, off the bat. So we start off on the edges of Shantytown, get ready to explore our way in. Now Shantytown has its owner, who's sat there right in the middle in his compound. Nice big shotgun, it's a heavily armoured compound. He is safe from the drunks and all the other horrible things that can happen in and around Shantytown. And has very, all the good stuff. He's nice to have, he's got a lot of the good stuff. We are However, having technical difficulties, people. 
However, he does trade, um, <coughs> and hopefully once we've solved our technical difficulties that we're having, you'll be able to get a much closer view of the board. Um, so, uh, he'll trade with people who can get to him. Uh, so we can get to him, we can buy booze, we can uh, get gold, we can, uh, he really likes relics, old things that have been left around the town, uh, and he'll trade relics for scrap. Um, and we can also then trade in for corn, for moonshine, and various things. Okay, the reason for all this is, <coughs> in seven turns time, because we went through this lovely little balloon marker down here, there's a hot air balloon arriving. The moonshiner, with the most gold, gets to buy passage on that hot air balloon and get out. And that's what we're looking to do, to try and accrue as much wealth as we possibly can in as short a time as possible so that we can pay our passage on, on that on a hot air balloon and get out. Get to a better place. Yeah. Now, the game doesn't have direct uh, combat between the characters, so we are combating against the environment but competing with each other for how we can do. Uh, and there are some things we can do in terms of uh, building resources and things like that that could, that could affect or, lim or limit each other uh, in different ways. So, first bit we need to do before we start exploring the town, uh, the town has as many drunks in it as there are players. So in this case there's going to be two drunks, and we roll a d20 to basically define where they're going to appear on here, uh, and each of the hexes is numbered. So our first drunk is appearing in number 11. So right at the top here, and our first drunk to come out is Conan the Librarian. Classic. Now the drunks come in three categories, which are colour-coded. So red, green, and blue. Um, I'll just make sure I'm getting exactly the right color coding on them. Okay, so red drunks are angry drunks. He looks it. Yeah, very angry drunks. Uh, they are the toughest, uh, and you gain the most for defeating an angry drunk. Um, and they've got, every, every drunk card's got a little life marker on it there. So in his case, it's 10, which is the level of inebriation you can take before he passes out. Uh, in order to defeat drunks, you don't fight them. No, no. You drink them under the table. Um, and for our next one, he's going to be in number two. So over here, not slightly too close, close to where to I want to start. <laughs> uh, we have the kind-hearted loan shark. Well known for being kind-hearted loan yeah, sharks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is also an angry drunk. Okay, <coughs> so as the rounds go on, more and more drunks will come into play. As we drink them under the table, they're removed. So each drunk has got a unique standee and a unique card. Uh, and so there's only so many drunks that we're going to uh, have coming through as we go. Um, but we'll get into that because in doubt we're going to end up in, in uh, drinking contests with them more than likely. quite early on. So we can start basically any edge to come round uh, that we want. So now, now we know the setup and the situation, we can decide where we want to come into the board. Now, we start off uh, during the day, uh, and there are two, for, and uh, we get four actions uh, during the day. Uh, we get two actions each to start with, and then another two actions once you've seen what's gone on, so you're not dedicating all your actions straight off the bat. Now, on your character card, you've got five categories, which show your actions. You've got exploration, you've got salvaging, you've got trade, you've got construction, and you've got challenge. Um, and next week's one, there's a value. So basically, that's the number of times you can do it during a turn. So we have three exploration actions maximum. So of our four actions, three of them could be exploration. Uh, we've got one scalp, uh, scavenging action, uh, and we've got two trading actions. Um, trading actions can only be done basically in the centre with the old man, with old man Harding. We also have four construction actions. So once we've explored these hexes. Each time we explore them, we'll learn what they could, what they've got the potential to be. And they could be cornfields, they could be stills, they could be saloons, they could be houses. There's various different things that they, we, they could turn out to be. Uh, and basically, we can use construction action, if we've got the resources to do so, to turn them into that thing. Uh, and then you have challenge, where basically you go challenge a drunk to a drinking competition. Um, if you challenge a drunk and win, survivors flock to you. Because clearly, you're, you can defend the, help defend them against the drunks. Um, if you lose, uh, then yeah, you're drunk at the table and you lose survivors because clearly you're, you're, you're not up to this and, and people start to uh, wander away from you. So our first element then is to choose our first two actions. So we've got little markers, we've got on to remind ourselves what actions we've chosen um, and what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to start off with an explore and a scavenge. That's exactly the same as me. 
guess it makes sense to do both of those to start with. Okay, so I am not going to start right next to the angry loan shark. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, kind-hearted loan shark. Kind-hearted. Yeah, clearly. Uh, uh, this fella never could hurt fly, which means he pretty much sucked at his job. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start going to number 10 with an explore. So we've got a whole pile of hexes inside here, which is all randomised up. And so number 10 has got the potential to be a house. Okay. Uh, and I'm also then going to scavenge. So to scavenge, I'll take our five sort of special dice here, roll them, and I total up what's on there, which is four. And that means I can have four pieces of uh, salvage, or I can have four relic cards, or I can have a mix of the two. Mm. Now, to do useful things, salvage it needs to be in basically blocks of four, because that's what's needed for construction. Um, it's possibly a little early on for constructing, but I'm going to go four on there so I can start to get some, some sort of resources on the board. So I'm going to take four pieces of salvage. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Okay. You're up. Fair enough. Okay, well, I'm well away from anybody, so I think I'm going to be fairly safe. And I'm going to move to there. Okay. So the first text on top is... What do I get? A saloon. A saloon. So it has the capacity to capacity be a saloon. Capacity to be a saloon, which is pretty big. <coughs> Uh, and I also, basically, will be having a little look around that area too. Okay, so you roll the dice. That's a good one. Uh, so you've got bad. seven. So you can have any mix of, sc of uh, scrap and cards to a total of seven. Right, well, I think I'll be going for, because you need fours, yep. I'll go for four scrap. And three of... And three relics. Relics, please. One, Just to see how these two, work. Three. So relics are worth... Basically, have a value on them. That value is their, the amount of scrap they're worth. <coughs> so relics are always worth more than just taking scrap. Mm -hmm. However, you have to take them to Old Man Hardy yeah, to trade to them trade. in yeah. to get their value in scrap. Okay. Whereas if you just take scrap, you can immediately use it without having to have gone forward to him. Okay. No worries. Okay, so we then... Now declare our next two actions. I presume we'll show them as and when we give them over. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so then we declare our next two actions. So I'm going to go for a, another explore and I'm going to go for a build. <laughs> exactly the same thing because <laughs> I got four salvage as well, so it would make sense. To so those oh, stay. Yes, those are there. Yep, yeah, for your memory aids for what you spent, <coughs> even though you've not done too many of the given actions. Yes. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Copy to death still. Okay, so. I'm going to spend my four scrap, and I'm going to put a grade one house on here. Doesn't do anything yet, because I don't have any survivors, but when I get some survivors, I've got a house, got to, a house into, to get to, yeah. uh, in which they'll start to collect scrap and other things for me. I'm then going to explore. <coughs> now, technically, I've got to connect contact onto mm. uh, the old man's uh, compound here, because it's the double, it's the, the double hex in the centre. So I could trade if I wanted to, but I haven't got anything to trade yet. So but I'm going to continue exploration and I'm going to come down here, down to number five, and go see what that is. So movement doesn't cost you any actions. You can move to any, uh, so that has potential to be a still. Uh, so I can move to any uh, location where um, uh, that's adjacent to an explored hex. And because center here is compound counts explored hexes, you can automatically move through that to any non-explored hex if you want on an exploration movement. Okay. Okay. Right. I'll be doing the same thing. I'll be basically spending four. Yep. Four scrap to build a, a mega saloon, which could be a much better saloon eventually. Yep. And, and then got a, an explorer action. Exploring. I am going closer. As soon as I've got some relics, I'm going to want to trade them in. Okay. So, so that, has, that way. also has the potential oh, to be a double saloon. saloon. Fantastic. Okay. So that is the end of the day phase for round one. Indeed. Okay, so we get a day, two actions and two actions, so four in total. You then get the night. And the night is when the drunks really start to move around uh, and problems start to happen for you. So, if we had survivors with drunks nearby, the drunks are terrible influences and they'll get the survivors to start drinking and turn them into drunks as well. We haven't got that situation yet. Uh, production, we don't yet have any survivors to produce anything, mm -hmm. so we skip that for this for the moment. If we had survivors, we could move them between our properties as well to get to shift the balance. Uh, but again, that's not yet available to us. So next we have the drunkards are moving. Now, as I said, color-coded bases on them, control <coughs> uh, what kind of drunk we're talking about. We have three dice for movement, each one color-coded 
to a type of drunk. At the moment, we've only got angry drunks on the board. So they're going to move northeast if they can. That's one movement northeast. Two movements northeast. If for any reason they can't, they will always basically go around the clock face, go, go from north, working around until they find a viable hex to enter. They can't enter a hex with another drunk in it, and they can't enter uh, uh, Old Man Harding's compound. But what they will do is they'll immediately leapfrog over his compound. So it'll count as not being there, they just jump straight to the next side. Uh, because yeah, they're not crazy not going in there. He's got a really big shotgun and high walls. <laughs> Even the drunks aren't mad enough to go in Old Man Hardy's compound. Okay, next one. New drunks arrive. Oh. Going to round two. So now it's number of players <coughs> plus one for new drunks. So busy. in 17 down here, we're getting the depressed salesman. So I just find his little standee. There he's not as strong. No, he's not. He's he's uh, yep, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's blue. Uh, so doesn't but, believe in himself. No, it really doesn't believe in himself at all. There. Um, so yeah. So actually, so red is angry drunks. Green is sad drunks. Uh, oh no! I know. He knows everything there is to do about kitchen appliances. Unfortunately, because it's the apocalypse, there are nobody with kitchens anymore. So you can't sell them on. Oh it's true. Terrible drunks. How depressing. <laughs> yeah, so you've got crap, sorry, uh, sorry, blue drunks are sad drunks, yeah. Green drunks are crazy drunks, and red drunks are angry drunks. So, next one, uh, going into Ooh, 16. Yeah. So, oh, can't go to 16, so we go around, so it goes into 20, because that's our next viable hex round so the clock can't, place. Can't, yeah. Can't yep. another No. Nope. Uh, Martha, the happy flapper. <laughs> She's a, she's a crazy drunk. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they don't have a lot of alcohol tolerance in comparison. Uh, and for our final one then, uh, 17 as well. So therefore, clock face round to 12. Oh, no, sorry, straight up. Straight up, yeah. Uh, to 18. And in 18, we have uh, Miranda Vodkarina. <laughs> and she's a sad drunk. Sad. <laughs> So as you can see, the number of drunkards is starting to, it's starting to increase to quite them. rapidly. Uh, we're going to need to get into some drinking contests here uh, to start whittling the numbers down. Um, at this point then, uh, the balloon moves one closer. Um, so we're starting to move in. Yep. And obviously when the balloon finally gets here, that's the point at which we need to have the goal to buy a passage on to get out of Shantytown and escape the drunks. So, round two. Uh, if we'd taken any uh, inebriation or stamina damage from drinking contest, that would now be reset uh, and we'd be, re be ready to go again. So we get our four actions back, and again, it's a two and two. Mm -hmm. As I start, as I took the initiation last time, it'll be uh, Marla Jones who's going to take the initiation actions this time. Okay, that's interesting. So, do I need to negotiate to do deals with him? No, you no? just have to have something to trade. Yes, okay. Lovely. Yep, you just have to choose trade as an action. Mm. Okay, so you've got scavenger trade. That happens to be exactly what I'm going for as well. Uh, okay. It seems quite sensible at this stage. Uh, so, you're starting off. So, do you want to trade first or scavenge first? I'll scavenge first. Okay, so let's roll your five dice. Okay, Ooh, so we've got another three. Mm -hmm. So three relics or three scrap. At this point, if you're about to trade, taking scrap doesn't it, seem very wise. No, it doesn't. Uh, so yeah, three yeah, relics. Two and three. Yeah. Okay, so now you can trade. So yeah. you're trading, you can swap your relics for whatever value is indicated on them for that amount of scrap. Okay, you can also buy things from him. <laughs> you can buy one bar of gold for eight scrap. For eight. Eight. You can buy one moonshine for four scraps. You can buy one piece of corn for two scraps. You can also buy a hangover cure if you need one for three scraps. But most importantly, to arm yourself against the drunks, you can buy booze. Um, and basically for booze, we draw the top five cards from the deck. Mm -hmm. It costs you three scraps for each booze card you want. Okay, if you buy all five, you can then choose to draw another five and then start to buy from those as well. Uh, but you have to buy all five to get to draw a second round. 
Okay. So oh, basically, there's no point carrying relics. No, not at all. No. You may as well just cash them straight in once you're at a trade point. Slightly confused by one that has no value. The it, ugly teddy bear is just an ugly teddy bear. Yeah, it is. It in is, a Santa costume, it's pretty it, grim. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> it, it, yeah. It is indeed a man, a mangled, ugly teddy bear in a worth Santa costume. Nothing. Worth nothing. He's so, not interested in that. No. So no way. No. Okay. Because not every random piece of tat you find around Shantytown actually is worth anything. Okay. Well, I think what I'll probably do is cast basically three gets you some uh, alcohol to go with. Yep. I'm, I'm going to use those. Well, you, might, you may as well scent. turn them all to scrap. Yeah. And then buy booze room. That would probably make sense. Well, I'm not going to buy gold yet. I don't think there's any relevance to it just yet. Yeah. But I could. <laughs> Yep, and basically, you can, it says there it's not a case of doing one trade as one action. You can do yeah. multiple trading things as an action. And in that case, I am trading in. So you've got, ten, so you've got ten scrap. So take those relics out of the way because they've all been cashed in. Okay, uh, we going for booze? Yes. Okay, so we'll draw top five booze cards. So you've got absinthe. So that's pretty, three, pretty yeah. powerful. Well, it basically depends which ones you want to buy. So you draw oh, five course, yes. and you choose. So you can choose to buy all five. Mm. Oh, the have one on me card. Have one on me is quite good. It means that basically when you're in a drinking competition, the other person drinks and you don't. Um, absinthe is pretty powerful. I'm going to uh, have the Dapper Dan hair pomade because that's just... Uh, if you look at this almost dried out uh, pomade, will surely make your hair shiny and stiff as a bat. Um, I believe it has, a value of two, well, it has a value of two scrap. I just want so it'll, co it'll cost you three scrap to buy a thing with a value of two scrap. Okay. But it nonetheless is Dapper Dan hair pomade. That thing's an, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm having that. So it's three. So it costs you three. Cost me three. Yep. So you have the so you bought the pomade. And what else would you like for your selection? Each card. Really, is... that should be for you for your tax. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, uh, so each, each card is, th is three scrap. Uh, so basically, the value, if you have a drink in the competition, yeah, yeah. the value shown on the, the alcohol there is the amount of additional inebriation your opponent takes. So, so the higher ones would be better. So yes. the absinthe Abs has, has, has got to be. Forward, yeah. so three for the absinthe. Yep. And I think I'm going to go for a have one of me. have one of me. It's a good one. Because it sounds like an interesting card to play. Yeah. Well, it's also the fact that if you, if you hit a point where... Um, you, know, you start to, to lose on a drinking competition, mm -hmm. uh, having that you as a backup throw it in. is really good. Yeah. Again, so yeah, I've got. Just play there. Yeah, so now I've got my two actions, so I'm going to uh, scavenge where I am at the still for seven. So I'm going to take seven relics and then I'm going to move up to trade as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're moving up to the compound to trade. So you're actually technically in the compound because you're moving to trade as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got a band aid, I've got some erotic literature, a uh, postcard, oh, uh, ooh, book on Dracula, oh, nice. some dirty used knickers, uh, a toy car, book? and Vagoo, the stuffed toy. Which is worth more than my teddy bear. It's worth it's six it. scrap. It's worth as much as a copy of Dracula. Wow. Yeah. So there we've got uh, 12, 20, 22 scrap. That's quite a bit of scrap. That's not bad. That's not That's a bad little haul there. Yeah. That was a good little, that was a good little scavenging operation. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna buy some booze as well. So look at our new top five. So we've got aspirin, there's more aspirin. <laughs> Tequila. Tequila. Wine and cheap beer. Well, I'm definitely gonna have the tequila. But yeah. Because you know, it's, it's, it's strength three, why would you not? Um, I'm going to have the aspirin because that restores your, your, your inebriation levels and your stamina during a drink competition. Sounds good. So that's six of my uh, 22. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have the wine as well because that also seems sensible, just a, a, an extra backup. Um, so that was nine. Makes yeah, sense I'll, take, extra I'll take the aspirin. extra aspirin just in case. Why not? So I can get some serious drinking tournaments then. Mm -hmm. um, so that's 12. I'm not going to take the cheap beer. No, it's cheap. Yes, yeah, it is. It's, it's just cheap, yeah. quite frankly. Uh, so I'm going to take um, ooh, 10 scrap there. Mm -hmm. So five and five. 
there's a lot of little pieces in this game. It's not a frustrating amount though, they're quite, no. they're quite nice in the sort of styling on them. Quite easy um, to as it's moving around. So, that was our first two actions. Next two actions. Okay, what are you going for? Ah, oh, probably. Okay. <clears throat> so, going for an explore. I'm Level going for 15. Okay, see what's up there? It's another saloon. Oh, the saloon's everywhere. I know. I think you just you just, create, you just, you just found like the drinking area. It's, it's up there. I imagine there's more drinking areas. There. Oh, there'll undoubtedly be more drinking areas, yeah. but I think there's five of each type. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, and, and then, then I am scavenged. Ah, uh, you've already scavenged. Oh, did I? Well, you've already got a marker on there. Oh, yes. And you're already allowed one. That's why there's another one. Then. So pick another action. Whoop. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I'll move again. Well, you could explore or you could challenge. Because obviously, you've got a drunk sat there on your saloon. Oh, yes. That would make sense. And, and you have absence. And I have absence. And permade. <laughs> challenge time then. Okay, so the challenge marker is that one was right. So that means you're down here to face off against <clears throat> uh, Miranda Vodkavina. Okay, so for this. We're on the dice here. So reds are bad for you, greens are bad for Miranda. However, and first of all, are oh, you cracking open actually... the absinthe? Well, yeah. Okay, it would so make sense to do with, that with the booze, what point. you've got, it's not one bottle, you've got a crate. Mm -hmm. So you have a crate of six bottles of absinthe. There. Okay. So you move that down to the next to your character card, shows your active booze crate, and you move that across. Or to your boost counter, so you've got six bottles of one of which you're about to use. So that means whatever, whatever you roll for her, she takes three worse. Mm -hmm. So you've got three reds, yep. so you take so three points three. of inebriation. She, she takes two, two plus, plus an extra three, so five. So she's gone from seven down to two. Okay. And your stamina has gone to one, because that was your first round. Right, you can choose to go for another round or call it quits. I think when I'm you, going to go for another round because yep, I've got the absinthe. Round. Yep. So I'll have to use another bottle. Yes, you do. And we'll give it a go. It's my house. Your saloon. Get you're going to show her the drink. Okay, so, so she's taking five there. So she's definitely down. You've taken three. Yep. And your stamina moves to your next to highlighted next marker point. Yep. yep. So Miranda's gone. So. I'm a little bit. We You're a little bit tipsy, but it's not bad. Not it's bad. not bad. Now then, she was blue, so a sad drunk. Yeah. Um, so, as a reward, you get two survivors. So you've got two cubes to represent your two survivors. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they can go to your hero mat, or you can place them straight out onto the saloon. Completely oh, I up think to you. Put them in the saloon. Yep. So they've heard about your amazing drinking prowess, and mm. they've, they've flocked mm. to your saloon. Um, as uh, they are a sad drunk, so a blue. Uh, you also get one free piece of scrap. Wow. Got it? Yes. Because basically you've gone through the pockets and found what they had. And they had an extra piece of scrap. Brought to me by the Green Fairy. Yep. Okay, so I am going to explore. However, I can't explore while he's there. Mm -hmm. So actually what I'm going to do is challenge first and then, assuming I beat him in drink competition, I'm going to explore. Sounds like a plan. Because once there's a drunk in the square, you have to deal with the drunk first. You can't do any other action there. The drunk gets in your way. So we're going to take on the uh, the kind-hearted loan shark uh, and we're <laughs> going to go straight in with the tequila. So we've got a three-point bonus in terms of alcohol, al alcohol that's going down here. Oh, okay, nice. so that's a one point for me. Good roll. And four plus three for the tequila, so seven for the kind hearted load shark. So he's going down from ten to three. Okay, I'm gonna go for a second round. And why wouldn't you? Ooh. Not as good for me, however, thanks to the tequila, that one for him becomes four, so that's gonna take the kind hearted load shark down so and out of the picture. There we go. Yep, starting to clear, clear the board down a little bit for space. Uh, but I take four there. So one, two, three, four. So now to That's your second. Yeah, so my stamina's moved up, gone up to three, and my inebriation's uh, gone down to 16. If these meet, if stamina and inebriation levels meet, <clears> that's <throat> when you pass out because you've drunk too much. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so you could obviously do multiple challenges in, in rounds as, as you go. Okay, I'm then doing my second part of my action, which is the exploration, to see what this is. And it's a cornfield that he was on. Oh. So I get two survivors for taking out the drunk. Uh, I'm going to put my house down here. He was an angry one. He was indeed. And because he was angry, I'll get two pieces of free scrap. Because he collected a little bit more than other people. Okay, and that's the end of our uh, four actions then for the daytime. second day. So we move back into the nighttime action. Um, so again, <coughs> if we had drunks on the same place as survivors, they would by now convince those survivors to start drinking and would turn them into drunks. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we don't currently have that. We now get production. So, as we have survivors in place, the saloon and the house, both being level one properties at the moment, uh, the saloon produces two pieces of scrap, so one per mm -hmm. survivor, yes. and the house produces two pieces of scrap, one per survivor. That's great. Yep. Thank you. Uh, you can have up to four active survivors in a property. Um, and basically what you get is things things work through. So the house will produce, everything produces scrap at grade one. If you improve it to grade two, the house gets you a relic card. Um, the cornfield gets you corn. Still, if you have corn, gets you moonshine. And the saloon, saloon, if you've got moonshine, gets you gold. Gets you gold. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of them up here. Yeah, there are. Um, doing saloon. <coughs> so what you're looking for there is obviously yeah, the saloon's really good because mm. that's, that, so that's, that's getting you gold. Yeah. And that's turning moonshine into gold. Mm. Well, moonshine's only worth four scrap and gold's yeah. worth eight. Yeah. Um, so there's a good exchange rate going on there. Yep. Yeah. Um, in the same way that one piece of corn from a cornfield gets turned into one moonshine, mm -hmm. corn's worth two, moonshine's worth four. Yeah, good so you get, you're getting cash generators by building this resource base up. Uh, you just have to, have to protect it from the drunks who keep going around luring your survivors into drinking habits and turn them into more drunks. <laughs> um, okay, so we could if we wanted to, if we had multiple properties, we could move our, our survivors around. We don't, we've only got one each. So now we're gonna move our drunks. We've got one of each color, so we draw all three drunk dice. So, <coughs> Mr. Angry moves northwest. He can't. He can't move. He can't move. He comes to the saloon. She is moving north. No, she can't. 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 Can. So she moves south. He's moving northwest. He yeah. can. Surrounded. <laughs> we now <laughs> add some more drunks. <coughs> and again, mm -hmm. number of players plus one, so three more drunks to enter the. Uh, uh, to go to Shantytown. So, one coming to 14, which is there. there. And we have Tiny George. He's not that tiny. And has paired axes. Mm -hmm. Some say that George had lost his babysitter when he was 10. Those sisters. tiny uh, sisters, sorry. Uh, <laughs> babysitter? <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't know where that came from. Uh, those tiny skulls he always carries around his sisters. Oh, no. On a necklace. On, on his neck, nice. Yeah. Adult themes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, in 17. So down Good. here. We have the bored housewife. Uh, meet Mary Funkhauser. She's a housewife. She's looking for some action. Funk. Any action. <laughs> <laughs> and our third addition to the shanty town is... Coming in number three, so over here. And we have Trudy Two Guns. The only thing this fella loves more than his liquor is to spread his bullets all over the place. Because obviously what you want with a drunk is a man covered in grenades carrying two Thompsons. Uh, Thompsons, yeah. Standard drinking attire. Yep, grenades and Thompsons. Okay, so we have our new drunks. Uh, the air balloons. Night phase. Moves one closer. We move back to the next day. So we get our four actions back. That's me to initiate this time. So, and our um, our stamina and inebriation markers reset. All right, then you're back. Yes, they do. Excellent. Yep. <coughs> okay, so we're ready to go again. Um, I am going to go for. Um, construction, because that seems wise. And in fact, I'm going to go for two lots of construction. 
So then you've gone for an explore and a challenge. Mm. Okay, so I'm going yeah, to see what happens. I'm going to spend <laughs> four on the cornfield. I'm going to move around to the still and spend four there as well. I haven't got any survivors to work these areas yet, but you know. Worth doing. You've got to have the buildings first. Okay. Okay. So we've got a challenge and an explore. Well, I've got to go that way to move. And yep. I've obviously so, got a challenge. Yep. So we're challenging first. <coughs> Indeed. So we're going up against Martha, Martha. the uh, happy flapper. The happy flapper. Okay. Are you breaking out the absinthe? I will. Shall I? Yeah, just to make sure. Yep. We'll okay. Crack a, we'll crack a, an absinthe. She ain't that strong, I don't think, but just got to make sure. Okay, so that's three for you, two for her, plus an extra three because of the absinthe, which does wipe her out. Yeah. Because she's only got five health. Done. That takes Martha out of the game. Gaining you two more survivors. Excellent. So they can okay. stay with you for the moment, or they can yeah, go I'm just in. I'm going to put them in my saloon. Yep. So it's maximum four Get survivors in a given building. Okay. Okay. Well, is that... If it basically gets bigger, it can be more? No, it's only four. Only four in the area. It just gets more efficient. Okay. That's what it does. Um, and yeah, you've got your explore action for Hex 19. Mm -hmm. And that is a workshop. Ooh. Wow. That generates a lot of scrap. That does. It's not building that next turn. Okay, <laughs> so our next two actions. Guess what? <laughs> and one of them. Uh, Okay, I'm going to, yeah, let's go for it. Okay, I'm going for two challenges. Nice, build up a lot of. Yep. Yeah. So, I'm going. Go for a big girl. Go to the saloon and take on Tiny George in a drinking competition. <laughs> I've already got the tequila out in play and I'm feeling good here. So, plus three onto our roll set. That Ooh. was a bad roll. <laughs> a, he's got two axes, that's why. Bad roll. Ratchet time. So I take five ranks of inebriation. <laughs> Fortunately, because there was absence involved, there was tequila involved, he still takes three. <laughs> well, that's good. It's at least something. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go for a second round. I take better. three. That's still not good. Two, three. So now on three stamina and 13 inebriation, these numbers are getting close. Uh, he takes uh, two plus three for the tequila, so another five. Okay, I'm going to go for round three. You won't get it. You hope. So that's obviously a sort of in uh, two bolts of tequila two down. Yeah. So I take another two. You got and we went to six stamina, so on 11 inebriation, six stamina, and another bottle of tequila gone. You definitely got him. But we've got Tiny George. So that gets me two more survivors and two scrap. And I'm going to put my survivors to work in the cornfield. Okay. I'm now, for the second part of my action, my second challenge. Going to go for the library. I'm going for going on the library. <laughs> because. You're looking a little. Because I here. have aspirin. You are. Ah, ah, which restores seven hit points and all the stamina. I believe you have I'll two more. I do. So I go from 11 <laughs> back to 18. Is that aspirin? Yeah, aspirin. I took aspirin. Aspirin to get to, uh, to, to, cure, to cure the, uh, the hangover. And we're up and we're against the library. I'm still trying to figure what my pomade actually does. Uh, it's worth scrap. <laughs> Right, okay. Trade it. That's it. And another amazingly bad opening drinking roll there. <laughs> uh, taking me for five points of inebriation one hit. Fortunately, we got the tequila I in play. Think you play to lull them into a full yeah. sense. And yeah. then just we got the tequila, so he still takes his three. Okay, round two. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I have more, more aspirin. aspirin. Now that, that is better. That's exactly. So that's yeah. a five, three to tequila. That is an eight point round into him there. He's, He's only got seven left. That's Conan taken out. <laughs> okay, so again, that's two scrap. See, lulled into. Lulled in. Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Played him. Played him, I did. And I'm going to take my two, my two more survivors there. 
I'd take him to the still. Nice. <laughs> Back end. So we've got your two actions. Uh, I think I'm going to be building on that workshop. Okay. So full scrap. Yep. Yeah. Well, now it's your grade one building. It does. And then I'm going to be using my scavenge as well. Yep. So roll the dice. So one, two, one, two eight. eight in total there. Nice. Uh, so what mix of relics and scrap would you like? I'm going to be going for give me a scrap run. I'm going to get I'll get four scrap. Yep. Uh, oh, four, relics. four relics. Yeah. One, two, three, and four. Four relics. There you go. Hope you're not another bear. Who doesn't want a weird, scary bear yeah, missing an eye in a in a well, that's slightly what I wondered, dirty? And nobody um, wanted it. No, 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 no one wanted it. No. No, I, I can't blame them to be honest. <laughs> Okay, so that's all four actions done from uh, this day phase. So we move across into the night phase again. <coughs> uh, survivors who are in the same square as drunks start drinking. Fortunately, there aren't any, so we're good there. Uh, production. Um, so we've got all the buildings currently grade one, mm -hmm. so they're only producing scrap. So I've got two for the cornfield, two for the house, two for the still, so six scrap in total. And for yourself, you have four in the saloon, mm -hmm. so four scrap. Um, nobody in there. Nobody yet. currently in your workshop. Yet. There we are. Okay, next one. Redistribution survivors. So if you want to, you can move survivors between your properties. And what does that make in any reason to do that at the moment? Well, at the moment, you've only got people in the saloon. So if I'm you wanted the workshop to one. produce, yes. you'd need to put some people in it. Then that would make sense. Um, Just asking it also means if you've got survivors who on your on your card are uh, basically reserved in characters yes, you didn't have a building to put them into, yep. you can now put them out and into play. Yeah, okay, our drunkards are getting ready to move. So we've only got blues and greens, so don't need to worry about the red dice. So our green is wants to move southwest, which he can't, oh. so we go around the clock face, so it actually goes north. First one blues wants to go northwest. No drunk is stupid enough to enter uh, the Old Man Hardest compound, so he actually goes all the way across the cornfield. Oh dear. Gonna have to deal with him, otherwise, mm. he's gonna take the take survivors and get them on the booze. Yep. And our housewife also moves northwest. Okay. Okay. Balloon. So, well, we're now into round three. And in round Does it three. Does it get the right? There are, there are even more. Uh, about to come out now. I'm just double checking exactly how many we get for round three. Uh, sorry, for this, uh, for this round it is number of players plus two. So we're getting oh. four drunks onto the field now. Okay. Does the blue move? Oh, it does. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, <coughs> so coming up to so number three. So up here we have the Resurrectionist. Okay. Uh, in case you've never heard of the speller uh -huh. and his doings, he's the one digging out fresh corpses for medical students. Oh, nice speller. Okay. Yeah. And looks like the rest, a little bit depressed. Well, you know, it's, it's the end of the world. Number one, right down the bottom here, we have the switchboard operator. <laughs> uh, loony from toes to teeth, most likely from all the voices he heard during his days as an operator at the telephone company. Look a little bit easy to take down. Yeah, it's a little we bit easier. No. Uh, Twelve. So down here, and we have Judge Johnson. Uh, this poor sap loved to pass his judgment on others. A big cheese in the old days. He felt powerful, but not so much these days. Mm -hmm. That's why he's turned to the booze. You see, the demon drink. It's got him. And our last, uh, our last new drunkard is in twenty. So right at the top here. And uh, hi to you as well. Uh, so uh, for anyone who's watching the chat there, uh, I just had a hello from Too Fat to Fly, who are the uh, uh, wonderful creators of this, of this game. Uh, we're having a great deal of fun playing. So, yeah. uh, and their, uh, their follow-up project from this, uh, Trouble in Temple Town, we've also backed. Uh, and when that uh, releases, we'll be uh, getting a good game play through that as well. 
So our tiny wrestler is our final one, going up into number 20. Uh, one look at this little fella, and you know that, may, that uh, maybe his discontent has something to do with his lack of inches. I have to say, that figure looks like it's based on someone they know. It really does. <laughs> it really does look like the artist has picked someone purposely. <coughs> no artist would ever do no, that. No, Clearly. no artist would ever Clearly. do that. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so, <clears throat> we've got our new drinks in play. Everything's moved. <coughs> the air balloon has advanced. Oh, Actually, you should there be on number four. Um, <gasps> we missed one. Yeah, well, it, it starts on zero. Yeah, it got a bit wobbly. Well, rather than one, yeah. yeah. But it's all good. We're good, we're good. Um, so, we're back around to the daytime again. We get our four actions back. We are all good. No Reset our right. inebriation counters. And off we go. There you go. On me. Yep. <coughs> What do I do from here? Okay. I'm assuming it's eight to build a beacon. Yeah, it's four. Oh, it's still four to go. It's still four. Oh, right, okay. Fair enough. Then it wouldn't make sense to do some building. I think. And. Probably some trading. Okay. I'm going to scavenge and trade. Oh. Mm, okay, so uh, you've got your build first? Yeah, I think I'll do a build first. Yep. I've got enough to actually do the build without worrying about what I scavenged. So four. Yep, four in there. And you're improving... I presume it just gets shop. bigger. Yep, so it moves to number two. Yes, I would like to generate scare app. Okay, and you're then moving to trade. I am. So into Old Man Hardy's compound. Old Man compound. I have a little bit better this time round. Not as much as you had, but... <laughs> no, that was, that was a ridiculous hand of cards. Um, <laughs> Twelve. Twelve scrap. Indeed. Okay, look. Well, I'm going to get some gold, because I just think it's a good idea, just because it's okay. shiny. Okay, so it's eight gold eight for... Eight gold. Uh, sorry, eight scrap good. for gold. Yep, thank you very much. Okay, so you've still got four more scrap. Do you want that scrap? I would like some booze. I would like some booze, actually, yes. Okay, so some extra stuff. Cheap beer, sake, oh. Uncle Harding's private reserve, oh. Slivovitz, <laughs> and aspirin. See, that's the one. Oh, there's not really toughies out there, but it's probably quite a good idea. Yeah, and it's three scraps for any of them. Okay, I will get. Yeah, because I've already got some uh, absinthe filled gun, so. Yep. I will get the aspirin. Okay, so it'll cost you three scrap. Yeah, and get the other piece of scrap then, I guess. Yep, they're right. One piece left. That is me. Okay, and guys, so what we're going to do is, as we're, we're going to uh, finish off the daytime actions, which will take us to basically about halfway through the game. We're going to have then a short little break and then come back to then take us through the, the, the second half of the game. As you can see, we're already starting to get quite heavily mobbed by the drunks. Yep. Um, and there's only so much longer our moonshiners are going to be able to hang out. <laughs> so I'm going for a uh, scavenge action. Uh, so let's see whether the dice can be my friends and give me some nice stuff. Five. Okay, Thank so I'm going to take five relic cards. Two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to make my way, my second part of my action, to trade. So as I grab my stuff, I'm running to the compound. Okay, so we've got some cheap earrings, mm. uh, an expensive left shoe, Ooh. a toaster, nice. eight, a top hat, ten, and a coffee tin. I don't have to plug it in, He's, I'm, I'm trading it, so that's fine. Okay. So I have 16 points worth of scrap there uh, from that lovely selection of little items there. He's um, going to look really good with that left shoe. He's going to look amazing with that left shoe. He may have a right shoe. You can never tell. He does have a lot. It was uh, a high so heel, yeah? I'm running low on... Yeah, it was a high heel. I thought so. Uh, so I'm <laughs> running low on booze because I've only got two bottles of tequila left. Uh, so I'm going to see what he's got available for alcoholic purchase. More tequila. <laughs> we have tequila. It's done well so far, so I think I am going to buy some more tequila. Stick to the tequila. Because that's worked. So it's three. Uh, I'm going to get some, uh, actually, some Uncle Harding's private reserve. Oh, okay. Yeah, for, uh, for another three That's there. I, um, and I think that's going to do me. So I'm going to 
leave the rest for now. Good job. On there. Um, and then just take my scrap payout. So 16. <laughs> so I'm not actually taking that yet. Um, so actually, yeah, I'm going to take a gold as well. Let's start, start collecting some of that. Why up. not? Uh, okay. And six scrap. Yes, yeah, we'll do that one. Six crap. <laughs> okay, so two more actions then, finish the day phase, and then we're going to break, and I'll be back for this next night phase. So, your two actions. Okay, so what are we going with? Fighting. Fighting. <laughs> okay. Well, drinking. Drinking. Not fighting. Drinking. No, drinking. Okay, so <clears throat> who, who are you going to go and drink with? Well, I think I'm going to, because I don't particularly like his face. Uh, I'm going to go for the two gun man. Okay, the two gun man, Dreading. way up here. There is no explore nexus. No way to get to it. Can't get to it. Oh what? Okay. So Tricky you have to then. pick another target. Okay. Well, it's so, got to be uh, who's in your cornfield then. Yeah. That makes sense. That's protecting my cornfield. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite happy well, if you I can't to get to him, I can't I'm, get I'm to quite... them either. Well, no, you can get to them. Okay. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're next to Explore Texas. Oh, next to. Yeah, it. he's, okay. he's yeah, just got it. no connecting route to no, Well, yeah, I'm not going to help you either. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of surprised with <laughs> that one. Yeah, uh, picking on the small I, guy, I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Going for the short guy. It. Okay, then. Booze, uh, crack open the booze for this one? I am. Okay, another bottle of absinthe then. Okay, so that is seven points straight into him, uh, oh, yeah, which gone. is a uh, instant <laughs> takedown, well, and an guy. entire one onto you. <laughs> that's, that's absent for you. It is. Can't handle his absent. So that is two survivors, two survivors and one piece of scrap. And who should okay. we go for? We'll go for the board housewife. Sense. Okay, yeah, so another. Yep. Yeah. Getting low on my absinthe. But I don't need to use the aspirin, which is surprising. Oh, well, yeah. But yeah. You got a good roll, so let's see you go. See if you can maximise my, you know, equal my terrible rolls. <laughs> so there we go. So that's four points of inebriation for you. So mm -hmm. you are there, you're on stamina one after your first round. Yeah, stamina you're now on stamina three. Because yeah. he jumps towards the next illuminated one. So that's one plus three for your absinthe. So you used to have another bottle, yep. so that's four onto her. So she's going down to seven to three. Okay. Going for round two. Do I do the have one on me? Why well, not? means you're not going to take anything, no matter exactly. how bad the roll gets. So basically this card allows me to uh, do the roll, but yep. only the board housewife takes the effect. Gets a yep, so she drinks, you don't. <laughs> it's still a roll. But it is still a roll. So depending on how good the roll is, Okay, so she takes three. Yep. Plus one for the absent. Yep. So, so yeah, so you've, wiped, so you've wiped her out. And that's another two survivors. Oh, absent gone. <coughs> and another one piece of scrap. All out. Yep. Correct, the absent gone. And you've got two more survivors. I need some more booze. Which I can't do anything with. No, but no, I can. Yeah, because I moved them, didn't I? I split them. Yep. Nice. Okay then, so, uh, my last two then. <coughs> I'm going for a challenge and a build. So I'm going across to my cornfield here. <laughs> and I'm challenging the poor, depressed salesman. Well, uh, he shouldn't have been in the cornfield. No, he shouldn't, he shouldn't. Uh, so, uh, we've got the bottle of tequila in play. There we go. Nobody wants TV. So that's Same two onto me. Two. And three, three plus, plus three, so six. On to the salesman. So he's still Ooh, in the game. He's on his last point, there. but he's still in there. So we're going to go for round two, uh, which wipes out my remaining tequila. Take us up. So three onto me. It definitely wipes three, him. But it's enough to take him out of play. And off my cornfield, so he's not going to leave my survivors my <coughs> into bad and naughty ways. Um, so there, so that gets me uh, two more survivors. And because he's blue, one more piece of scrap. 
Uh, so I'm going to put them on my cornfield. And then for my final action, which is a build action, I'm going to spend four bits of scrap and improve my cornfield. Sounds good. So I'll actually start growing corn now, mm -hmm. rather than just being covered in garbage. <laughs> and there we go. So that's the end of the, uh, the day phase now. Uh, so we're going to take a short break, guys. We'll be back with you in a few minutes' time.
Okay then guys, so we're back again now for part two. I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed our uh, uh, lovely range of adverts there. Um, so, uh, we're back playing uh, Moonshine's The Apocalypse. We're currently about halfway through the game. Uh, the town of Shantytown is starting to become uh, overrun with drunks. Uh, and we're slowly starting to build up our resources of cornfields, stills and saloons uh, to earn gold. Uh, because when the hot air balloon arrives in just a few rounds time, uh, the moonshiner with the most gold gets to pay their way out and everyone else gets left behind in Shantytown. So, uh, the game is split. Where do we go? That's what's in hot air balloon, to safety. So away to safety. from all the drunks. Okay. That, that's all we need to know, we're getting away from the drunks. Fair, fair. Uh, and the drunks are running around with Thompsons and various other things. Okay. I, I think that is a good idea, just, yeah. just getting away from the drunks. Um, so, uh, game splits you into day and night phase. Uh, we've just finished the, the day phase uh, at the moment where we're moving around doing actions, building places up and so on. We're now into the night phase where the drunks really start roaming and causing trouble for us. Uh, it's also where people actually do their work and everything else. So, mm -hmm. Barrett Brown and our survivors only work at night. Um, so it's safer. None of our survivors are there to be tempted by a demon drink by the drunkards, so we're okay on that one. So we get production. So we're going around each of these locations which have got these red squares on them that represent survivors who are currently flocked to us for protection after we've uh, drunk the uh, uh, alcoholics uh, under the table because clearly we're not drunks by drunks doing at that all. no nope. um, and we so uh, they're, they're producing things for us uh, so up here I've got a corn field that's now in full production and that's going to produce me four pieces of corn so you have four survivors on it I have four survivors on there um, I've then got a house and a still neither of which are properly operating yet so they're just producing scrap so I've got two survivors on each, so that's going to produce me four pieces of scrap. I have a workshop, which is a big workshop. It is. So for each of my survivors there, I'm gaining two. So eight pieces of scrap in total. Indeed, plenty. Eight pieces of scrap is the same value as a gold bar. And your saloon, at the moment, is, only producing, is only producing scrap. Yes. Because um, it needs moonshine ready to sell. But still four people there, so they're going to produce you four pieces of uh, scrap. We're running out of scrap over here. Escape ball, we'll we'll be trading it in pretty soon. I'm pretty sure. But... Okay, so we're done production. If we want to, we can move our survivors around between properties, or we could leave them where they are. Uh, mm, okay, well, they are really. They're doing okay. Uh, I'm actually going to redistribute one from my cornfield onto oh. my still. Sounds clever. Um, okay, so we've done that. The drunkards now move. So at the moment we've got blue and green, so uh, uh, sad and um, crazy drunks. So we only need the blue and green movement dice. And I've just got my rubber. There they are. Blue and green movement dice. So our green drunks move northwest if they can. If they can't, they go around the clock face until they find a location. So our green drunk up here, number four, moves to nine. And down here, from one, he goes up to two. Uh, um, oh, here's one, northwest. Ooh, moves into my house. Moves into your oh, house. Have to deal with him. Okay, and the resurrectionist it's the judge. up here wants to go northwest, can't, so moves round to number four, so it goes north. Uh, this round of the game, we are gaining uh, number of players plus two drunks, so four more drunks to enter the game. Oh dear. So, first one's coming in at location number three, and this is the Merry Undertaker. Meet Luciano. Nobody knows why he grins all the time. He probably loves putting people in the ground. And he is an angry drunk. He's angry. Next up in number five. Oh, on my still. That's not so good. It's not so good, is it? No, it's not so good. It's it's probably have more places. Yeah. We've got Ooh. Corey One Eye Rogers. Uh, you better stay clear of that thing in his hand. It's no, it is known to cause headaches. That's a really big baseball bat covered in barbed wire. And a Mahusi beard. He does have a very impressive beard. Uh, Nineteen. Your workshop. Oh joy. We have the foul-mouthed bishop. <laughs> Bath and Wells. Just the foul-mouthed <laughs> bishop. We have no other information than that. Okay. Of his particular diocese. <laughs> that he represents and all such dioceses are merely fictional, merely fictional. when mentioned of course, yeah. uh, yes okay and we've now got because we've run up run ten decks we're shuffling back through uh, mm -hmm. we've got uh, previously drunk on table drunks now starting to find their feet again 
So Miranda Vodkarina is coming back in 16. So far we got her right at the top. Ah, she's recovered, you see. Had a bit of a binge. Had a bit of a binge, but she's back on her feet. So we have a lot of incoming drunks. Trixie. Some of them in places <coughs> we really don't want them. So back round again, four actions in two sets of two. Okay, so I believe you're to start. Mm. I was trying to work. pick your first the two actions. Okay. Okay. And I, I really need to get rid of those <laughs> you're people. Just have a fight. I, I am just <laughs> going to go and have a fight. Yes. Okay. I think that is wise. <laughs> okay, you're off. Where are you going first? Uh, I'm going to explore. You're going to explore where, I actually where you are? Another potential workshop. Ooh. But I'm also going to get rid of the bishop from my workshop. Okay, so you're heading up to the, uh, heading up to the workshop yes, yes. for a drinking challenge a with the workshop. Movement. Okay, uh, are you cracking a bottle open? Well, I, I don't have a bottle. You? Okay, so you're on your cheap booze, I am, I am which means it's just, the straight, it's just the straight dice roll. But luckily I have some aspirin back there if required. Okay, so that is two for him, but three for you. Actually, uh, your turn for aspirin. It should, should have been clear, I think. Yes. Uh, so one, two, three, and Stamler goes up to the first marked point. Yeah. So and he is seventeen. Right. So he takes two. two. Nope. Not the judge. Oh, not the judge. No, not the, the judge. Person. The foul mouth bishop. So many drunks here. I know. There's a lot of drunks there. It's, 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 yeah, getting, it's, it's getting quite bad. <laughs> so round two. Oh dear. So that moves your stamina to three. Mm -hmm. So the next long one, you take four, and he takes one. Oh dear. And you can at any point decide you, not to continue. Yeah, can you, you can. So are you going <laughs> for round three? I'm gonna probably take your aspirin. My aspirin. Yeah, I'm gonna use the aspirin. Okay. So mark on the right goes up seven. Mark on the left resets. <laughs> <coughs> resets, resets all the way. All the way. Okay. Right, I'm feeling a bit better now. Yep. Jug some aspirin, you're good That's to go. It. Oh, I am feeling a little oh, yeah. bit better. So you take one, uh, he takes four. That's the end of the, of the foul mouth, mouth bishop. But he is only a crazy drunk, so he's worth he'll two survivors, but no him. extra. Uh, two survivors. Also, but he is worth two survivors. And. Don't really have a construction for them, but they, you can hold them okay. in reserves. So they're following you around until you can find some of them to live. Excellent. Okay. <coughs> well, I've just gone for two challenge actions. <laughs> so I'm going around, first of all, to deal with the judge. Drinking time. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to crack out Uncle Harding's private reserve. <laughs> which is strength three alcohol. Um, you see my, so far, terrible dice rolls when it comes to drinking competitions. Still not great there, so that's a three, three, one. So he takes two plus the three for Uncle Harding's uh, private reserve, so five. Oh, he's straight out. That's him straight out. So that's Judge Johnson there, failed by Uncle Harding's private reserve. Um, and that's two more survivors coming to play. And they have one at the cornfield mm -hmm. and one still. <coughs> yes. Second action, I'm going to move in. Go for another drinking competition um, <laughs> against uh, Corey One Eye Rogers. Uh, obviously, we've still got <coughs> Uncle Harding's private reserve in play, he's uh, but, he is, but he is an angry drunk, <laughs> he so he's going he's to need a bit more work. And oh. that is not a great role. Ah, <laughs> oh, fortunately, we've got Uncle Harding's private reserve, so he takes four. I take. Uh, I also take four. Take three to four. Jump forward on the stamina. So we're three to fourteen at the moment. Go for round two. Oh, nice. That's better. So he takes four plus the three for Uncle Harding's private reserve, taking, causing seven damage, and I take just the one. Okay, but I'm currently running a six stamina against a oh, 13. Oh, the reserve hit him as well, did it? <coughs> yeah, you, you definitely yes, got you take, him. Took yeah, seven, with, seven with the reserve, total. definitely. He's a goner. It's good, because I was not looking good there. <laughs> so I was a little blurry-eyed. <coughs> Fortunately, I've got some aspirin in reserve, so we were okay. So he's an angry drunk. And before him, uh, the judge was a, uh, a sad drunk. 
So he was worth two points of scrap and the judge was worth one. And I get another two survivors coming in. We're going to go live in the house. Nice. Okay, next two actions. Okay. okay. What are you going for? I'm going to build. I'm going to make my saloon a little bit better. Okay. So that's four. Scrap. <coughs> Take it to a grade two saloon. Indeed. And do second edition. I'm going to do some gold trading. No, it's going to some trade. Mm. So, you're doing gold harding, sir. So. I'd like a piece of gold, please, for eight. eight. Get my uh, gold ready Two for bits the, of gold. Uh, <coughs> for the balloon. Okay then. So I'm doing two construction actions. Nice. So I'm going to take my still to run out to two. In exchange for four gold. No, four four scrap. I'm gonna say four gold. Four gold! Four good. Wow, that'd be amazing. <laughs> uh, and then can move up to the saloon here Ooh. and spend eight so building. to take it all the way through to a grade two. Nice. Tissue right next to my saloon. Yeah, I am and right next to your day. saloon. And I have a cornfield and a still. Yes, you do. That's because they're the only two on the board. They are indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's my, my actions done. Uh, so we're moving through now to the night phase. No survivors with, with drunks near, near, uh, on top of them to take them into bad ways. Mm -hmm. So we're moving to production. So here I've got four survivors producing corn. So four more pieces of corn. I've now here I've got four survivors with four pieces of corn, which I'm draining back in to create me four moonshine. moonshine. This is where it starts building. And I've got four in the house, but still a grade one house. Great. So that gets me four bits of scrap. scrap. I don't currently have anybody working in the saloon. Oh, yeah. Okay, I have four in my workshop. Just producing lots of scrap yep, for me. Yeah, so that's eight pieces of scrap. And you've got four in the saloon, but because they don't have any moonshine to sell at the moment, they just produced another four pieces of scrap. So it's 12 pieces of scrap in total. Too many scrap. It is. Well, no, it's not. It's all gold. gold. But remember, you can, with Uncle Harding, also trade scrap for moonshine. You can indeed. So if you don't so have a cornfield in the still, you can just buy the buy moonshine the man. in order to sell it in the saloon. Um, <coughs> so we can now choose to redistribute any of our survivors. So I'm going to move mine out of the house and into the saloon. The saloon. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Yep. Um, drunkards are moving, so we've got all three colours of drunkards on the board. So let's see where they go. All right, start with the reds. Uh, red wants to go southwest. He can't, so he goes around the clock face to eight. Uh, green, uh, blue's next, so blue wants to go north, he can't, so around the clock face, ends up going south. He wants to go north, can't, ends up going south east. Then we've got our greens, they want to go north, can't, goes to the cornfield, north, can't, so ends up coming down to 11. Okay, we are now on uh, yeah, this five. No, six. Yes. Uh, so now it is drunks. Uh, it's players plus four. four. Uh, so we've got six drunks entering the field. Wow. Sixteen. So. Up there. Up there. Who have we got? Uh, it's the kind hearted loan shark has recovered from his earlier drinking expiration and is back. Sixteen again. Can't go to sixteen. Only clear fa uh, phase is the uh, potential Just saloon there. That's Tiny George. Back on his feet again. That's one of the apocalypse. Yep. Six. It's down here. We have Conan the Librarian. Staggered back to his feet. Nineteen. Oh. Just there, the workshop. Get out of my <coughs> the tiny wrestler. Oh, his back is east. He is. Oh. He's looking for you. <coughs> 
four. Uh, Martha the Happy Flapper. And our last one. <coughs> Six, which you can't go. It's there for the house, because that's the next clear point. It is the depressed salesman. Trying to continue selling TVs? He's, gone, he's, go, he's, go, TV. he's going door to door, isn't he? Well, yeah. <coughs> is he a TV salesman? Mm-hmm, would seem so. Oh, okay. oh no, he's... Uh, uh, kitchen appliances. Uh, kitchen appliances, oh, but obviously no one's got any kitchens left. Yeah. He knows everything there is to know about kitchen appliances, but no, there's, there's, there's no kitchens because of the apocalypse. Okay. Uh, and you don't need... And, yeah, they're, they're, and all, I think it's been left, it's just been turned to stills. Uh, so we have a lot of new drunks on the board. Yeah. Wow. We advance our balloon. Busy. So, this is our last phase. The balloon is arriving at the end of this turn. Go time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have four actions. Make sure these are good. Yep. Um, <coughs> you everything, everything has a value to it. Oh, yeah. Um, it just comes down to what you can do with it in the time frame. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so obviously our stamina and integration reset. We're on the countdown to the overall apocalypse now. Well, it's, it's getting mean. the balloon. Catching the balloon. <coughs> Catching the balloon is important. Okay, so I'm starting off in this round. I'm going for a challenge and a build. <laughs> so many so drugs. So many options as well. Yeah, we'll apply the. Okay. And scavenge. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move up here to Tiny. And I challenge him to a drink competition. I've still got some Uncle Hard uh, Harding's private reserve on the go. Let's take him down. Ooh, a good opening roll. Wow. Uh, so I, I don't know what happened there. Uh, so that's four off the dice, three off Uncle Harding's reserves. So that's seven points of inebriation for Tiny and just one for me. Round two. Two for me, six for Tiny. Tiny's done. Tiny's had enough. Okay, I'm then going to spend a build action, spend eight scrap, and take the saloon. Always route finished. In my last, oops, last my building, I get two survivors, tiny, both of them are going to work in the saloon. Nice. Okay, uh, well I'm going to go and get rid of those small fellow. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to like pursue your issues with the tiny world. wrestler. Well, yeah. You, know, you get a vendetta, you get a <laughs> what happens, isn't it? It's, it's the spandex, isn't it? Spandex and moustache combo. I, I think it must be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no boost to use. No okay. spring, so this is just all okay. out. Yep, it's just a straight <clears throat> drinking competition for cheap booze. Damn me. Two for him, but three for you. So, uh, one up on stamina, yep. and 17. Round two. Come on, little fella. Two for you, three for him. Stamina is up again. Are we going for round three? Yes. <laughs> Get out of my workshop, little man. Three for him, he's down, but another two for you, and the stamina moves up again. It's the tiny wrestler. He's out of my place. Out and down again. And I will uh, scavenge. Okay, roll the dice. Let's see how good your scavenging goes in your workshop. So we're on seven. seven. What mix of cards and scrap would you like? I want. <laughs> it's tricky, isn't it? Uh, I'll get some. Well, unless you're going to build yeah. immediately. Then taking the then taking the relics is the uh, is better it's option, better option yeah. because you yeah, it means you can go and trade to, exactly. to go for a gold that grab. Does make the most sense. Yep. So seven relics. Seven relics, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And there better not be a useless bear. 
But I bet the problem is every mangled, yeah, one-eyed, blood-stained teddy bear has a value to someone. Just, just There's not, no one not to Uncle Hardy. Probably when you leave the Don't in, in the balloon, to. take it with you. Maybe, There's maybe then. Somebody on the other side. Maybe. <laughs> okay, we'll take that home then. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, next two actions. Scavenge and trade. Can you build without being on it? No. No, I thought so. It doesn't cost you anything to move. No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Right. right. So, scavenge. Uh, is that six, seven, eight? I'm going to take those all as relics. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm gonna trade. It would make sense. Straight into the old man. Good point to do so it. we've got some leather boots, oh, nice. some used lipstick, mm. a watering can, mm. six, some dried out ink, eight. The good book, which the he does not value. What? No. Mm. A golden tooth doesn't value that either. Probably he's got a good set of dentures, A rare isn't? diamond pendant. Again, not it interested. No scrap value. And a band aid. That's worth two. Well, that makes sense. Oh, well, yeah. So, that, I don't know, I have ten points of scrap. Strange, who's not interested in the gold tooth? Well, there's not a lot you can really do with it, to be fair. Well, it's gold, isn't it? Well, it's well, gold. If, it's, it's if it's gold. Mm. So, I've got, so, I've got ten, so, I've got ten scrap there. And I've got another so four. So, gold is here. the thing you're after. It is. Well, it's the thing we're after. Well, yes. So, maybe, maybe drunkards just don't mm. care about gold. Could be. It could be. Uh, so, <laughs> we've got ten there, so I'm going to take that as one gold and two scrap. Right, so, at the end of this though, I know I'm going to, I'm going to end with a big production schedule around through these saloons. Mm. Uh, I'm going to want to use, I'm going to end up using two uh, moonshines there, so I've got two uh, survivors. I'm going to be using four, four here yeah. with my four survivors, yeah. so I'm going to want six moonshines. Yeah. I know I'm going to, I'll get that produced off my corn and my still as it is. Um, so even though I'm going to lose a, uh, a survivor from the cornfield uh, to becoming still a drunkard, likely, yeah. I've still got I've got enough corn actually in in store. It doesn't matter, but nonetheless I'll get three out of there three in one turn to one turn to a drunkard, so I can take. Um, and I've got four moonshine already, so I only need two more. So I can actually sell all of my corn, yep. uh, which is worth. Well, no. Oh, no, you're going to Four corn gold. is yes. a gold bar, Indeed. so I'm going to cash in all four of my corn for a gold bar. That makes sense. And I've got my six scrap there. And so I am good at that. Um, and I'm going to hold my trade there. So, <laughs> okay. your, two, your, your, your two actions. Well, I'm going to... You're not a No, I'm not, I'm going to go build here. You're going to build at the workshop. I am. Now, do I? Well, if you're not going to survivors there, yeah, they're yeah. not going to get a chance to build. But I you have, have two. two survivors. two survivors. Yep. So, it is so worth. two survivors will produce, if you maximise it, will produce four it's scrap, well. but it's going to cost you eight to build it. Exactly. That is not, it's not a good business. Business no, move. It isn't. Well, you live and learn. Workshop's not a good idea. <laughs> it is just not in the last turn. Not of the game. in the last turn. Yeah, well, no. that's what you get for not reading the actual letter. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to change your final choice of action? Only well, seems yes. Bad. <laughs> okay. Do something else then. What would you like to do? If I was you, I'd trade. <laughs> trade everything! Trading town. Yeah, it makes more sense. And in fact, what I'd do is I'd buy 
four lots of moonshine off oh, it. That is exactly for the pub. For the yes, pub. Indeed. Because that will turn to a lot more gold. And how much is moonshine? Uh, moonshine is four scrap. Four. Don't forget that. So, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. You only need, you can only Ooh. use four. Oh. So at, for, at four it'd be 16 scrap. That'd be the maximum you can get out of it. Right. Because you only got one round of selling in your saloon. Yes, good point. So if you've got a total of 16 scrap, that would be turned into three lots of gold, which is worth 24 scrap. So we have the wonders of alcohol fueled economics. <laughs> <laughs> Best kind of economics. Beer flavoured. 16 scrap. Well, you may as well have just used the cards. That's what I was working on. You, yeah. th you threw me there. Yeah. 8, 10, 12, 14. 14. So, oh, two of those. cards plus two. And that gets you four, mo uh, four moon shot. Yeah. Which I need for my. Yep. Saloon dealing. And then the rest you can either turn to gold or just leave the scrap. It gets valued the same at the end. It, yeah, you cash it up at the end anyway. Yeah. Don't you? yeah. Okay, so that's the end of our last set of actions on the last day. So we've got the night phase, and then the balloon the arrives balloon for our escape from, from Shantytown. Depending on what these drunks Depending do in the last Depending on exactly what the drunks phase. do in the last round. So, survivors become drunkards. So no survivors in the house. But there are survivors on the cornfield. Oh no! I know. So one of them disappears. Well, it only happened once, which is quite surprising. No, <laughs> it was in fact the bored housewife. Of course. She can't appear there. So she appears in the next first five one. So over there, in number two. <coughs> Production. Production. So we get three corn. I get three corn coming up from the cornfield. Nothing for the house because I moved everyone out of it. My uh, still, I've got three corn, three corn, which I cash in. So they make me three moonshine. Fourth player person doesn't have anything to do, so he makes me a piece of scrap. We've then got the two saloons. So here I've got four people, four moonshine, generates three bars of gold, gold. we sell the alcohol. Here I've got two people. Um, so, uh, two moonshine, two moonshine generates one bar of gold. Right. And for yourself. Cornfield. Yep, done cornfield. Cornfield. Yep, so you get four scrap, sorry, eight scrap from your workshop. It's all about the scrap for me, it seems to be. Scrapyard king there. Scrapyard king. That is a lot of scrap you have over there. That's a very big part of scrap. So you have taken eight. Oh, yeah. And then you have your... Out of scrap over there. Yep, and now you have your saloon, <coughs> where you Which have I your four moonshine moon that you purchased. Moon you got yep. four people, so they turn the four moonshine into three gold bars. Okay, we could redistribute survivors if we wanted to. I've got no way to put them. Nope. Um, ooh, we move the drunks. We do. Don't, think it, don't think it actually matters at this stage. I don't think so. Um, because they can't kick off on us, they can't cause any trouble. They can't take anybody. Um, we can't see our balloon, and that's the end of it. And that is the end of the round. So now it's a case of tying up all of the gold for which one of us wins the bidding war for that one place. I want to sell my scrap first. Well, here we go. Let's, Let's tot it all up now. Let's see where we've ended up. Uh, yeah. Game end. So, during the seventh night phase, production is completed. You immediately convert all resources to scraps as follows. Then take their value in gold. So eight scraps is one gold. So you've got less than eight. It's not worth a gold. Okay, I have three. So three one, moon sh one moonshine is four scraps. So I have four. One corn, two scraps. Don't have corn left. Relics. Scraps equal to the number on the card. Oh, haven't got any. For every four survivors... Take one gold, round it down. It says on your hero mat. So I'm assuming that's just four survivors. Uh, so one, two, three. So I've got three lots of there. Because uh, I can't take any more than that. So that gets me three gold. Uh, 
So I've got four scrap from him. So checking those. Uh, da, da, da. Check that four scrap back in. So it's to eight. So it's to gold as well. So it just keeps it easier for the token to knock it around. Uh, very cool survivors. Uh, da, da. Yep. Okay. Um, two more places to tide than the ways to it. So, for yourself then. You haven't got any moonshine? No. Haven't got any corn? No. Haven't got any relic cards? No. <laughs> Number of survivors? You have got, no, got a few. two lots of four there. Yeah. Uh, so you get two gold bars. Okay, and then we'll value it off. So each gold bar is worth eight. <coughs> and then the, the, value, the individual value of the scrap. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten, so that's 80, plus one, 88, and three pieces of scrap. 91 scrap value to buy my place on the balloon. I think you may be like <coughs> I don't know, you've got a lot of scrap over I there. I've got seven. Yeah, and a lot seven minutes of 48, so where else? <clears throat> four. So 52, so four. 56. Four. 60, 64, 64, 68, 4 and a 1, 72, 73, okay, uh, so they're going to tell us the bit we got wrong, because <laughs> we haven't read all the errata, uh, we, we, know, we, know we've had, we know there's a new rule book out, and we haven't read the errata. Ah, unused, oh, so no problem at all, okay, so that's 3 gold I lose, 2 gold you lose, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to Fatfly. <laughs> We're also aware that when you actually go and check out an area in your your phase, you actually get one. Yeah, we should we should have had a free relic card each time we explored. We learned part of it. failed. Yeah. Too. So <coughs> let's retail that then. <laughs> so that cost me three and you two. Three, four, five, five, forty. And you would lost your two. I'll just put them away. Okay. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's fairly obvious, but you know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's pretty close. Well, yeah, I think it's pretty, it's pretty close after that. So, uh, so we've both got so we've five gold there. So, eight, 16, 24, 27 on the extra scrap pieces. So, a one. so 25. Mm -hmm. So two pieces of scrap in it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I do manage do. I do manage to stag my place on that balloon by a difference of two pieces of scrap. That's what was it? Is Alex gonna go back to the drunks and uh... <coughs> yeah. Andy's just left there with the drunks. <laughs> That's it. Uh, they're, 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 they're trashing the place, Did drinking you throw the sand dry. Left of that bottle? No. Before, it's oh. coming with me. Oh god. <laughs> Harsh. Yep, I've, I've got wine, tequila, a little bit of alcohol in private reserve, and some aspirin to maintain me there on the balloon flight. But I've got all these saloons. You've got all the, and all <laughs> of the drunks. <laughs> just smashing the place up, <laughs> turning your customers back into drunks. As he goes. So, thank you very much for joining us, guys. Hope you've, uh, you've enjoyed the play, this playthrough of Moonshine's Apocalypse. Um, there were some bits that Slightly. we didn't get entirely yeah, right. Um, <laughs> Um, there is uh, there's an writer to come out to the rules uh, and it was a very first playthrough uh, but really enjoyable game really nice on the the way it's playing through there Played some really cool characters <coughs> very nice styling to it um, an awful lot of different tactics and elements uh, okay. to play in there for how you want to go about the game um, fantastic artwork and I'm pretty sure some of these drunks are some of the people that create this game <laughs> <laughs> or if they're not potentially close friends or relatives well, possibly possibly um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, highly recommended. Really good, fun gameplay. Um, it has a solo gameplay mode as well, uh, and all can be played in two to four uh, player mode. Obviously, in four player mode, this will get crazy because Absolutely. the number of drunks each round is controlled by the number of players. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, rather than getting like we were at the end there, where we were getting uh, basically six drunks, you'd be getting four players, you'd be getting eight, but you'd be getting four. You get four, so four to start off board. with, yeah. then, then five, six. So it'd be, it'd be escalate massively more so way more chaos happening on the board mm -hmm. lots more trouble with the drunks 
uh, and more and more of your uh, your townspeople being turned into drunks as well as you go. Yeah. Um, so, and an awful lot more drinking challenges yeah. and things as that chaos goes on. Nice so, little drinking dice, like the movement dice for the uh, drunks as well. Yep, yeah, so good little, good little little randomly. Oh. Fantastic. Overall, really nice game, nice gameplay. Uh, it has literally just landed with us this week uh, from the on the Kickstarter fulfillment. Um, if it's a game that's caught your fancy uh, and you'd like to uh, own a copy of it, uh, you can do so either by coming visit us at Psychic Games, uh, go through grangelivegaming.com uh, for the shop page there, and that'll take you into Psychic Games and all the Kickstarters and things that we back. Um, or uh, if you and uh, anyone else you can like to convince, we'd like to hit that subscribe button. Uh, as soon as we hit our target, which at the moment now is 60 subscribers, uh, we'll be doing a giveaway, which is, again obviously includes uh, tonight's game of Moonshine's the Apocalypse, as well as all the games we've reviewed. Uh, in the previous episodes, uh, which you can check out either on the videos on the page uh, or as we get them uploaded onto the YouTube channel. Thank you very much, guys, and good night. <laughs>